It's absolutely incredible. I've never experienced anything like this. Going into it at 40, 45 miles an hour, I fully expected to lose control. It was fabulous. I stayed on the brake all the way through the turn. It felt very secure, very controlled. I was amazed. I wish I had it on my car right now, to be very true with you. I'd feel a lot safer. At first, you might wonder what all the excitement is about. The driver slams on the brakes, and it comes to a dead stop. It looks easy, until you see a competitive car without the anti-lock braking system try the same thing. As soon as the wheels lock up, the driver's lost control. Even in those instances where it's not necessary to come to a full stop, the ABS system helps you maintain control in the turn. Without ABS, your automobile becomes a sled. No matter how hard he tries, with the wheels locked, it's virtually impossible to control the direction of the car. To help you better understand the anti-lock braking system, we set up a test to create a situation in which surface conditions vary on either side of the road. The driver is approaching the skid area at about 45 miles per hour. He hits the brakes and the wheels lock up. Steering control is virtually impossible. Now, watch the Mercedes-Benz with ABS. Same speed, same conditions. By definition, ABS is a system which electronically prevents the wheels from locking during the braking process. In this side view of the car, you can see ABS in action. As the wheel approaches lockup, the system eases the braking pressure and it starts to rotate again. Should the wheel approach lockup again, the control cycle is repeated. Here are two more examples of ABS performance. Here's a similar test. As you can see, the Mercedes equipped with ABS is able to maintain control and steer the car out the escape port. The anti-lock braking system is a sophisticated piece of engineering that Daimler-Benz began developing as far back as 1959. And while engineers all over the world have praised it as one of the most important contributions to road safety, Possibly no one speaks more eloquently of its performance and benefits than people like yourself. After driving the Mercedes with the ABS on it, uh, I can't say anyone would not want to have a car without that braking system. And the steering was, was precise. It went exactly where I wanted to go. It, was, it put me in control. So it's an incredible safety right. feature as far as I'm concerned. Wouldn't want to drive a car in the snow without it. My next car will have ABS on it. Uh, I'm certainly glad that the Mercedes, which I just took uh, delivery on, uh, is equipped with the ABS system. Now let's look at passive safety. The first and most obvious example of passive safety is our supplementary restraint system. Automobile passenger safety has received increasing attention in the United States in recent years. At Mercedes-Benz, passenger safety has always been of great concern. 
the company built a safety prototype as far back as the 1930s. Today, every Mercedes-Benz automobile carries as standard equipment a comprehensive passenger safety system. The Mercedes-Benz philosophy embraces both active safety, helping the driver to avoid trouble before it happens, and passive safety, measures designed to help protect the car's occupants if an impact ultimately should occur. Standard on all Mercedes-Benz automobiles is the supplemental restraint system, SRS consists of a driver's side airbag and padded knee bolster, supplementing the driver's seat belt. ETR, or emergency tensioning retractors, is also standard in every new Mercedes-Benz. In the event of a major frontal impact, the ETR is designed to instantaneously and automatically tighten the driver's and front passenger's three-point seat belt, thus enhancing occupant restraint. A major frontal impact triggers a sensitive electronic device which signals the airbag to deploy and inflate fully within a fraction of a second cushioning the driver's head and upper body and minimizing risk of contact with the steering wheel. Simultaneously, of course, the emergency tensioning retractors, ETR, tighten both front seat belts. The entire sequence takes less time than the blink of an eye. 15 years of development and 450 million miles of use worldwide attest to the precision and reliability of this restraint system. In the unlikely event that the system were to be triggered accidentally, normal driving functions could continue. Fore and aft body sections are carefully designed to progressively yield under the force of a major impact, absorbing kinetic energy before its full force can penetrate to the passenger area within. The fuel tank is mounted deeply inboard. The steering column is designed to yield in a front or oblique impact. This advanced design, along with features such as SRS and ABS, give the Mercedes-Benz owner an extra measure of safety. In addition to the supplemental restraint system, a Mercedes-Benz is designed to provide optimum protection to the passenger in the event of a severe accident. To begin, as we've already pointed out, the passenger shell is extremely rigid. This rigidity gives it the ability to resist crushing in a rollover or side collision, thus providing the greatest possible protection for the occupants. In the event of a front end collision, the front end has been designed with crumple zones, which permit the car to literally crumple at a controlled rate to help absorb some of the force of the impact. Finally, the steering column is designed to collapse under impact to help reduce the possibility of severe driver injury. What we've shown you are just some of the ways that Mercedes-Benz engineers exhibit their concern for active and passive safety. This brings us to the last item on our list, the power plants. Once again, the best or nothing is the guiding philosophy. We build two different kinds of engines, gasoline and diesel. Each is matched to a specific car in the model line and each reflects the basic character of the car it serves. Because of the time limitation on this tape, we're going to confine our engine presentation to a brief overview. 
let's start with the diesels. First, we have a five-cylinder, 2.5-liter diesel engine with an overhead camshaft and mechanical fuel injection. While many non-Mercedes owners tend to think of a diesel as slow and lacking response, our 2.5 provides surprising responsiveness at a remarkable level of fuel and operating efficiency. For increased performance, we offer a 2.5 turbocharged version of this engine, which boosts the horsepower by 33% and the torque by 38%. The third engine is a six-cylinder turbocharged diesel with a displacement of three liters. The key thing to remember about this engine is that it compares very favorably with many gasoline engines in performance, while delivering overall maintenance and operating economy far in excess of most gasoline engines. The first of our gasoline engines is an inline 2.3 liter engine that develops 130 horsepower. It offers a combination of mechanical electronic fuel injection, KE3, which provides good engine performance, fuel economy, and low exhaust emissions. If for any reason the electronic should fail, the mechanical system will take over and let the driver get to a service facility. This is followed by our 2.6 liter inline six cylinder engine. It delivers 158 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. It's available with either a five speed manual or four speed automatic transmission. Next, we have a 2.3 liter power plant with 16 valves. What this means is that each of the four cylinders has four valves, two for air intake and two for exhaust. This allows for a 25% increase in airflow through the combustion chamber, which leads to a significant increase in performance. Specifically, 167 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. The fourth engine is a three-liter inline six-cylinder gasoline-powered engine. This engine produces 177 horsepower. Like the four-cylinder, it has mechanical electronic fuel injection, KE3. This is a proven injection system which measures the air entering the engine. This system is able to constantly fine-tune the mixture of air and fuel to assure peak performance and minimum emissions under all types of load and weather conditions. Finally, we have two V8 engines. The first is a 4.2 liter with single camshafts over each bank of cylinders. It too has mechanical electronic fuel injection, KE3, along with electronic ignition. This is a microprocessor controlled system that determines the best and most precise ignition times for maximum power output and fuel efficiency. The top of the line is our 5.6 liter V8. It offers all the benefits of the 4.2 liter engine, but with an additional 1.4 liters of displacement. To put it simply, this engine represents the state of the art in engine technology. Okay, so there's a quick review of our engineering philosophy and its applications to the systems in our vehicles. Between now and the time you begin your formal product training, you should study your product and sales information material and take the time to look at the owner's manuals in each car. These will provide a great deal of detailed information. Remember, many of your customers consider themselves experts when it comes to Mercedes-Benz. You'll go a long way toward winning their confidence and their business if you can demonstrate that you're the product expert that they expect you to be. This channel Old Benz. Thank you for attention. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel.